Good morning. Hope everyone is doing well today. Um, as always, happy Saturday. Uh, it's a beautiful day here in, in my part of the world, and hopefully it is in yours as well. Um, here in the United States, we're getting ready to celebrate uh, Memorial Day and uh, remembering those who have given their lives for our freedoms. And uh, so this is a uh, uh, this is a pretty pretty fun weekend here. It kind of kicks off our summer. So um, welcome. And as always, if you have questions, if you have, uh, you know, con concerns about anything, please put it in the chat box and say hello um, as you get start as we get started here. And then today we're going to be talking about putting the sashings on our quilt. I'm going to go through some questions that had come up on uh, the YouTube channel and a few that were in the chat box this week and then those on the forum. First of all, I want to share with you um, a few of the uh, pictures and stuff of others quilts that were on the forum for those of you who um, may not be able to get into the forum and see those pictures. And so we've got some East Coasters here um, with us already. So um, welcome from North Carolina, Massachusetts, and Florida. Got the East Coast. So um, welcome, welcome, welcome. So this first image <clears throat> is um, just a, a really beautiful example, um, you know, using your your colors in that. And I believe that, um, let me see, that was uh, Lynn who um, offered that to us and just did a very beautiful job with that. So there is one color combination for that. Then we have uh, this image where they're starting to put um, the blocks together, and I believe this is Christine. And uh, so the blocks are coming together and you can see how using a color palette works beautifully there. And I especially really like the, the little stripes in between with the, um, the little block in between which is which is just a wonderful um, addition to that and then the, here is um, I believe this could be Helen has put this one up and uh, she's already forming her her quilt and what a wonderful job uh, putting it all together this is this is a great um, way to um, use different size blocks. I'm guessing these are 12 inch blocks here and so these would be six inch and she's made them into four patches and again you know some some wonderful stuff going on between um, each one so whether this is Christine's or Helen's I'm not sure but um, just a, a great um, way to put that and the other thing that I really um, particularly enjoy about this is that it doesn't come off as a bullseye here with this with the color being strong with that red in there um, she's complemented it around um, this side of the quilt and even with the um, pinwheels which is which is lovely and then you know the stronger blues uh, the cool colors down here and then again with that center block just a, a, a great design um, point there so well done on that and then um, this one here is that same block again um, using you know putting that black and white in there and giving a really pop to that that fabric and those colors um, really enjoy that um, let's see and then let's let's save that one for a little bit later I want to I want to do a little bit of talking first and then um, talking about the design of that there was a couple of questions that came up on the forum of you know I needed to show a little bit more of my thinking and this is the part where 
Um, this isn't necessarily a total design class, but it's a color theory class. So I want to talk to uh, talk to this issue in terms of color and uh, and a little bit about design because design is really important in, in the whole grand scheme of things. And generally speaking, I start with a pattern or I have made a design of my own and I and I've got a fairly clear picture of where I'm headed. This one I really didn't. It was using up um, the blocks that I had made for the color theory class and putting them together. And so on my design wall, I had created, or on my graph paper, excuse me, I had created a design that I thought that I liked and on paper I still do and I may find another a, a style or something but the style of these blocks and I really really wanted to use in the top of the quilt the theme fabric that we had um, built our palettes off of and I wasn't I just wasn't feeling it completely with that and I and I didn't want to just use it as a border so um, as I got it up on the design wall, I could see that it wasn't doing what I had envisioned in my head in that particular pattern. So therefore, I changed from that pattern and I started playing with something else. And most of that play happened directly on the design wall. I didn't really go back to the graph paper until I was you know, doing some math and doing some counting with that. And so um, someone asked, well, can we see what it looked like before? And so I did take a couple of pictures. And this was where I started from. And I was putting up blocks and I certainly didn't like this and, and I would have changed that eventually and, and put different blocks here. But as I was putting it up and, and I was, these little three inch blocks that I had made, I was, you know, gonna fill in here and stuff. And it just seemed kind of overwhelming. And that these blocks didn't really kind of work with it. it, it just didn't feel right to me. And so that was my, I just slapped up blocks and started playing with it. But as I sat back and I started moving things, um, because over here was going to be the other 12 inch block, the, the tree, um, and um, I had, you know, several other blocks that I had made and, and stuff. And it just, it just did not feel okay to me. So that was where I, I started from. And then I went back and I did, uh, excuse me, let me get this design. Um, Oh, I'm still there. I, I It's because I can't count. All right. <clears throat> then I had this layout. And I, I, I still wanted to use these in some way, but I didn't necessarily like them all together. So I um, decided, well, what if I put those at the top and what if I put them at the bottom of the quilt? Um, those six inch stripes and I'm, I'm using my cursor and pointing to it but you can't see me point to it um, so apologize for that so at the top of the um, quilt are those six inch by one and a half inch strips and I so I decided I was going to separate them and I initially thought well a white background would would do okay but as my design wall is white I did not feel that that did a whole lot for the blocks or the quilt itself. So I kind of ditched the, the white background on that and decided to um, work with the um, different colors. So I started putting up colors that I drew out of the floral bouquets. And so I went, if you look on the screen to the left-hand side, there's that deep yellow, mustardy yellow gold. Um, I started with that, but it seemed to overwhelm 
uh, for me. And it, it was very strong because my other thought was is that I was going to off-center this quilt and put maybe a 12-inch strip along the right-hand side and maybe 18 inches or so to make this into a full lap size um, quilt because I would have four rows down. You can only see three here on the screen, but below those are another three um, blocks um, below that. And then the red in the middle, um, that was really um, a no-go. It, it was too dark and it would take over completely the quilt. So I, I canned that red in the middle. And then I went to the lime green because I love the lime green. And I really liked it and thought that I was going in that direction. But then I put up a large sheet of green to the, you know, on the one side. And again, the quilt became very green and lost some of the block. Um, then I started playing with the, um, it's, it's a teal with a lot of white in it. And you can see it between that center block at the bottom and above the, that floral. And it, again, kind of lost something. Um, I thought, okay, this, this one could be good because it adds, you know, it, it picks up that teal. It, it does well. And then I saw the lavender. And the one thing about the flowers is each one has just a touch of lavender. Um, and I don't know, that lavender came across really wonderfully. And I just felt that it complemented the blocks, enhanced them in the way that none of the other colors really did. Because even that teal and white it did not really pop out um, the flowers as much as that lavender. And all of a sudden I saw the lavender in those bouquets where I hadn't really seen them before and I really like that. And the good part, um, you, you know, all of you that follow this kind of thing, that lavender is the Pantone color of the year. So I'm, you know, I'm just following, you know, design um, stuff out that's out there on the um, internet. So, um, and that was a joke um, because normally I don't. I just really liked the way the lavender enhanced because it's got the red in it and it fits in with the cool colors here and, you know, the warm colors that are in some of the blocks and in some of these. And so all of a sudden the lavender became the color of choice and it's... Um, a linen fabric type look fabric. Um, I think it's Robert Hoffman um, for anybody who's interested in that. So anyway, that's how I came up with that design <clears throat> and felt that um, it would work the best for what I wanted to do. And my style is going a little bit more mod modern, a little bit out of the box. Therefore, the offset, um, you know, those, those strips at the top um, and as I get to that point of sewing all of this together, what I may want to do in terms of that is um, even make those longer, possibly taking them up to nine inches. I haven't decided that yet. So anyway, for those who were curious about that, um, that's how you know my thinking progressed on that. So hopefully that was um, helpful to you um, a little bit in terms of how I got to where I got. So my original plan I still think is a good plan and I'll use it possibly in a little bit more traditional um, fabrics and quilt um, style. Um, here I was using the bright fabrics and it in I really wanted to use those floral blocks and so it wasn't really working for me doing those two things that I really wanted to stick with and I still wanted to stick with that <clears throat> even after I had um, played around with it for a while so anyway that is that part of it and then the second thing that um, several questions came up about uh, print, you know, how do you know which way to iron things? Um, that's a tough question because not all patterns put, you know, the ironing or the pressing um, 
you know, where which is the best way to press this and make it happen. So I, I want to share with you a little bit of what I do. I don't know that it's the best thing or the best way to go about this. Um, and you know, as time goes on and, and we do more of these Saturday mornings, and if you're here with me, um, I'll address it as I, you know, look and do a little bit of study in terms of, um, I did some this week, but there's not a ton out there um, telling us, okay, if you don't have a pressing, you know, place, here it is. Um, and so, I mean, if you have some thoughts on that, um, you know, don't hesitate to put it in the chat box this morning. So let's uh, drop down to this camera. And here was a block that had a lot um, going on in it in terms of matching points and getting this to, to lay flat. So as I was looking at this block <clears throat> in in here was the, probably the most helpful. This was way too confusing. But this one gave me um, an idea of, of what to what to do and, and how to put these together. So um, I made the decision that the, the pressing of these I was going to need to so that I would get my flattest um, block that I could when it was entirely completed was if I did it row by row. Now there's a number of different ways that you can sew all of these blocks um, together in that. So I, I sewed the top uh, block together. I did not iron it um, and you know I, I finger pressed a little bit. Um, so I, I had all of these seams um, going to the left um, where I had, you know, where I knew there was going to be a lot of bulk, which was right there. Um, when I sewed the first and second seam, uh, rows together, I opened this seam. I pressed it open so that that, where that bulk was going to happen, would lay flat. And wherever, you know, and so this one, I, you know, the seams were going this way generally, you know, um, here I opened all these seams, all right? So I pressed them open because of the bulk. And really, honestly, that's what I do. I assess the block. I determine where, how I can butt the seams up together um, because I definitely want to do that or when I have that extra bulk, I will press them open. And the other thing that um, I will sometimes use, and I love this stuff, um, because when I have a, a block that has some bulk to it in the seams that is not laying exactly the way I want it to, uh, this product I find to be extremely helpful, more so than flatten or um, starch or any of those. Um, it's called Easy Press Solution. And I have put it in a small uh, spritzer bottle. I get a very light mist and I can just spritz once so I don't use a ton of it. But one little spritz will give me... Um, a very flat block and I don't I have never tried anything else that has given me the flatness that this product um, does and I know it's in the shop um, they've had it um, in the uh, the quilt show shop um, and uh, so you you would probably find it there in terms of that and so in terms of pressing this is a this is a tough one um, at times because you really have to sit and look through each of the intersections and what they're going to do and how you can be helpful with that. And oftentimes I will even draw a little arrow as to which way I'm going to go on the block. And um, so I would advise you know you on that. I will again keep addressing this as I work through it myself and we I just saw it uh, pop up in the chat box that they have the easy press with a sprayer which isn't that nice um, 
I may have to um, to snag one of those myself um, because I uh, my sprayer sometimes will give me a little bit more than I than I want on there. So now I want to move to um, at this point talking about sashing and putting that in. I'm going to grab um, a couple of blocks here. And <clears throat> these blocks are my nine inch blocks. So unfinished, these blocks are nine and a half inches. So I have cut my sashing um, nine and a half inches in length because I want them to fit within um, the block. And I have trimmed and squared up my blocks keeping in mind that at these points here, I want this to be one quarter inch away from, from the edge, and I have done that all the way around, and this block is now nine and a half inches. And I cut this, I fussy cut this out of the fabric, and it too is nine and a half inches. So on my rows, I'm going to put, and I'm going to sew mine vertically, but it doesn't matter whether you sew them horizontally or vertically. It doesn't, that I don't think is, is matters at all. I'm going to go vertically simply because the lines of the quilt um, are, ver it's a vertical type quilt. And that's my thinking on that um, right or wrong in terms of that. So now I'm going to sew, um, my sashing into my block and when I do that the first thing that I am going to do is I want to pin or use the acorn glue if that's what some of you do or whatever glue um, that you prefer in terms of that I want to make sure that that is set um, directly in and again push your pin straight down and then because you don't want the lavender to show on this side on the back side and you don't want the darker um, raspberry type color um, to show um, on the top then I go to the other side and I make sure that I pin there and the same thing I want that to fit um, directly into that corner. The reason that I pin this is if there is for some reason anything that needs to be eased it's going to happen um, in between that and because the machine will sometimes um, pull um, I will often drop a pin right here in the center and I make sure again that I have that aligned and I will drop a pin just so it doesn't move on me and then I will begin the sewing process of a quarter inch seam and what and I will usually I will run it here because I know that I have cut this well and if there is any discrepancy in my block it's going to happen on the back side and it will um, the seam line or the seam allowance will take that up and make that happen. So now I have that, you know, sewed on and now I can sew it to the next piece and continue with my four blocks in my row. And now it comes to the, um, the long, the long row and and I and I just I'm going to use this block that I I showed with value at the very beginning because as you have your rows sewn together you're going to measure for that um, sashing in the middle so I will have three rows across and I want to measure through the center of that block all three of those rows and I want to get an average of those three because that's what I'm going to cut my sashing for and at the top of you know uh, the blocks as I'm putting these together vertically now I am going to do exactly the same thing I'm going to find the center of my quilt or my row 
excuse me, it's not the whole quilt yet, but the center of my row, and I'm and I'm going to mark it in some way. Most of the time, I will simply just fold my my row in half. I will get you know crease it at the center, and then I will take. Um, my strip that I have cut to the average size of those three rows and I will put it in the center and then I'm going to put it again in the corner just like I did for the other sashing and I will do the same um, down here at the bottom of that vertical row and then I will sew this one in the same way to that one and then the next row over do the same thing. Um, so and that's the way I put my borders on as well. Uh, I take, if I was doing the whole quilt and I was putting borders on the side, and this is very helpful, I know, to when I do my own quilting or I send it to my long armor. They appreciate this too because it helps to square up uh, um, the quilt. Uh, again, you measure, um, I measure left, center, and right of my quilt. I average those three numbers and that's what I cut my first cut and I usually do the sides because the quilts are longer and so my fabric um, I can get more out of my fabric by putting the sides on first and I have cut that so I will put I will um, sew my center or pin the center first take it up pin that corner pin so those two sides and now I'm going to pre uh, measure again top center and bottom and I including your border and then find that center point again and sew it on um, and then I will have you know my top and my bottom now if you're doing mitered corners that's a different scenario but I'm I'm just referring here to putting borders on the side and borders on the top um, we'll we'll work on mitered border borders at another time Linda's asked uh, what width is my sashing my sashing was one and a half inches wide um, I didn't want a ton of sashing, but I wanted it to, to give it some impact. So it will, this is one inch wide finished. So that's about what I will have between each of the blocks. So with that, um, uh, I'm looking at the chat box and Here's an uh, Rebecca has an interesting um, thought with the um, the blocks and which way to press them. She says I often place the blocks on my design wall and then determine which way to iron the seam allowance, and that works absolutely as well. And um, I will work it that way too. Be sure to read the restream replies. Um, and yes, the, the design wall is very uh, helpful. And uh, Robin, you're correct on that one. And wherever I go, I either make a um, portable one or I have a wall space um, set aside for a design wall. Um, okay, so that pretty much um, takes care of those questions, I think, in terms of you know, working on the borders and the sashing. So if you have any uh, any other questions pertaining to that, I, you know, please, please ask those in the forum, on the YouTube if you're watching that way, or here in the chat box before we take off. I do want to talk about next week a little bit. Uh, we're gonna, this will be the finishing up of this project and you know we would really love to see your um, end design and your end quilts uh, would love that and just as we saw the one let me see if I can find it really quick um, here um, here's one design um, I love it I think this is a, a lovely quilt 
and it really sets off the cool and the warm colors and has done a, a good job of designing and making that into what's going to be a very lovely, um, very lovely quilt. And so would love to see, you know, your your designs as well in terms of what you finish up with. And so please post them on the forum. Please um, send them to me or I will get, um, you know, um, get them in email and I'll put them up, up next week. And so um, as far as next week is concerned, I want to um, take a look at your pictures, number one. Number two, I want to go back and review the highlights and the most important things to look for in terms of you know, color theory and choosing your fabrics for a project and going over um, patterns that you may or may not choose. I also want to um, talk about black and white the browns, the, the grays, and adding them along um, with your quilt and your palettes. And most importantly, I want to talk about your style and, you know, choosing what palettes and things that draws your attention and coming up with that. So we're going to kind of review and bring all that together. We're going to talk about quilting designs for this quilt. And then um, last but not um, least, um, just share with everyone else um, the things that you most learned. And if you'll think about this week, you know, what was the, the, the one thing that you know will help you in the future as you choose fabrics for your project? And because you may have picked up something someone else didn't and by highlighting it then, or if you know something that I did not touch on, I would love to, you know, to hear that from you as well. And um, I see that Lynn has put up, sometimes I struggle with aligning my blocks across from each other in my sashing. Do you have any suggestions about how to keep them straight? That's a great question. And basically uh, what I do in terms of that um, is, and I, I wish I had one sewn. Um, I may touch on that as well next week um, as well, Lynn. But what I do is that if, if everything is straight, you've used your quarter inch seam and you've cut well, it pretty much aligns but that doesn't always happen and it doesn't always happen with me. So I get it. I will pin, I will fold those blocks together and I will get that, those two um, seam lines to butt up against each other. And once I do, then I'll go back and pin. Um, so they're gonna be butting up. Let me, let me drop my camera for a second. Let's say that um, these two are coming, you know, coming together. I will fold it so that I am butting, you know, these two seams that are supposed to meet here. And then I will press so that um, I can pin when I, this is folded back, you'll have half of this one over here. I can pin it to this side. So I will go actually over into here and match up those seams um, directly across. And then I will pin from here once I have matched those or butted those seams up against each other over here. I hope that made sense to you and it was helpful. Um, in explaining that, um, that's a that's a tough one. But what I will, um, I will, uh, you know, get two together so that I can butt them up for next week, Lynn. Um, I promise um, to do that. So that will be next week. I hope that you'll be here to help finish up with that to get an over um, all. Uh, review of the color theory which is where we started from to see the pictures of people's finished quilts because that inspires me and gives me ideas um, of, of 
future designs or future quilts that I want to make. So Lynn, thank you. I hope it was helpful and I will um, do a little bit better with showing that. I'll sew some sashings together so that we can definitely determine that. So I may not have the quilts all the way together so that I can show you how to do that, but I'll have most of it. Um, pressed and sewn. So anyway, have an absolute wonderful weekend uh, for those of you in the state celebrating the Memorial Weekend and the start of summer um, as we know it. And uh, for the rest of you, have a, have a lovely um, weekend and um, a lovely week, and I will see you next Saturday morning. Um, so I forgot to find my little, uh, here we are. See you next week. Bye-bye.